Thank you for clicking on the video and welcome back to the channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Matt. This is Secondhand Home Theater. And on this channel, I talk about various home theater topics, but I do it looking through the lens of buying things used because almost everything I have here in my home theater is a used secondhand item. Here today, we're not really talking about that so much. What we're doing today is a different type of video. I've never done this before, but this is a video response challenge video that I'm responding to another channel here on YouTube called Pedro's Movie Cavern. So just to give you a little background about why I'm doing this video, uh, Pedro's Movie Cavern and a few other YouTube channels have kind of gone back and forth sending out this little challenge to people about making a four movie overnight like horror challenge where you would set up an overnight screening of four horror movies and kind of see what different YouTubers would pick. Now, uh, Pedro's Movie Cavern is another smaller channel here on YouTube, similar in size to like mine, but he's a good companion channel to something like what I do. He doesn't really talk about home theater so much as he actually talks about the movies themselves, uh, kind of looking at it like how a cinema buff, movie buff, would kind of, you know, look at a movie where he talks about directors and actors and producers and stuff behind the scenes sometimes about making of the movies and stuff like that. Where I'm more about home theater and even when I venture into talking about a Blu-ray release or a DVD release, it still usually revolves around how I apply that here in my home theater and not so much like the plot of the movie and all the background details. Definitely go and give Pedro's Movie Cavern uh, a look, you know, consider subscribing to him. Uh, his channel will be linked down below. And he's really how I got the idea for this video. And when Pedro uh, did his channel's video a few days ago, he mentioned at the very end that he didn't really have anyone to pass the challenge along to because all his sort of contacts that he had in the YouTube space had already done theirs and kind of challenged him to do it. He was kind of at the end of the line and he didn't know how to pass the challenge along. And so I sent him a comment, you know, put a comment on his video and just asked, hey, would you mind if I ended up you know, doing a response to this to kind of keep things going and maybe pass it along to one or two of the people I've been in contact with here on YouTube. And he messaged me back and said, yeah, that'd be cool, you know, to do it and that he had seen my channel and stuff. So I was real excited about that. So that's what we're doing here today. So just a few quick pointers about how this is going to work. You need to pick four movies, uh, horror movies. You can pick pretty much whatever you want. And you're basically scheduling this block of movies from like 11 o'clock at night until like 8 a.m. in the morning. And you have to pick four movies to kind of fill that eight hour gap, more or less, in there. Now, a lot of guys that I've watched on these uh, videos have different themes or different ways that they go about doing it. They either pick a theme, you know, that kind of runs through every one of the movies, or some of them just pick their four favorite horror movies or you know, four favorite horror movies in a certain genre and then kind of play them out like that. Uh, Pedro did something a little bit different on his channel where he just picked, you know, four movies that would kind of give you a different feel with each one of them. And that's kind of like how he did his. And so in a similar vein to that, I don't want to just pick all the, you know, big gun horror movies and say, oh yeah, just go out and watch Halloween, go out and watch The Thing, go out and watch Friday the 13th, you know, a lot of the ones that people are probably going to pick when they do these challenges and people kind of say are their favorites out there. I decided to pick four movies that have kind of a personal relation to me in terms of my like history and like my history with like home theater and like movie watching if that makes sense. <laughs> so that's how I'm going to do this. I'll try and explain as we go along. Movie number one on this challenge video is going to be Child's Play 2, not the original Child's Play. And I own it in this uh, box set of all the uh, Child's Play and Chucky movies here, so I don't have just the individual cover for it. But I'm picking Child's Play 2, and the reason I'm doing that is I saw Child's Play 2 first before I saw the original Child's Play. 
uh, kind of like a couple other movies that I've talked about here on my channel, like Aliens and stuff like that, where I saw the sequel before I saw the original. And yeah, you kind of maybe need to know what's going on in the first movie, but you kind of don't at the same time. You can watch the second movie and still like understand what's going on. But the main reason I'm picking that is like I said, I saw that movie first before the original. I also grew up in Chicago, which I've mentioned here before. And the Child's Play movies, at least the first two, are set in Chicago. So I, you know, have a personal connection with that because that's where I grew up. But a lot of movies like Blues Brothers, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, movies like that that are kind of considered iconic Chicago-based movies that have Chicago like landmarks and a lot of stuff involved with them would get a lot of play in the 90s and stuff when I was watching TV on my local stations. And so Child's Play 2 got shown on a late night movie and I remember watching it and just being completely uh, taken by like Chucky and the whole idea of the doll and all the weird like stuff that goes on in the movie uh, even though it was edited for TV at the time so you missed out on some of the like more violent stuff but I saw it I really enjoyed it and I knew because it was Child's Play 2 there was one before it but I didn't end up seeing that till much much later on but anyway so because this kind of encompasses my young childhood life like up until I'm maybe like 10 because I remember watching this on a late night movie at our old house before we moved to where my family lives now so I wouldn't wouldn't have been older than like 9 or 10 when that happened. So to start off Chucky 2 or Child's Play 2 is going to be the first movie in my list because that's kind of like the younger portion of my life in terms of horror movies. Now we're going to move on to kind of like the teenage years of my life and for that I'm going to pick one movie out of this double pack, and that is the remake of 13 Ghosts from the early 2000s. Uh, now, this movie I had on VHS. I actually remember renting it on VHS, then getting the VHS later on, and then ultimately buying a DVD version, and then getting this version here uh, in this two pack that I've had for a number of years. And I would like to pick up the Shout Factory special edition uh, that they made the collector's edition, but I just haven't found it at a good enough price uh, to add to my collection to replace this one. But anyways, in my teen years, before I really got into like the more classic staples of horror movies, so like Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, like the big hitters in that, 13 Ghosts, this remake, was like my favorite horror movie for that time period. I remember watching it over and over and over again. Uh, my one sister, uh, who's the next in line after me, she's the middle child, also really loved this movie growing up and would watch it all the time. And so that's kind of the reason why I'm picking 13 Ghosts to be the second movie in this four movie set because this really encompasses my teenage years of my life because I watched this movie a ton and it bridged the gap from VHS tape into DVD and then into Blu-ray kind of in my home theater and movie watching uh, collection and it's a pretty decent kind of ghost movie it's a little bit different it's definitely of its time you can tell it's an early 2000s movie just the way you know it's set up but it is a good movie in terms of like the practical effects because most everything is done practically. There's a little bit of CGI in there, but all the monsters, all the ghosts, all that sort of stuff is all done practically. So it definitely looks good in that aspect. So to kind of move on, you know, to the second movie in this list that's gonna encompass my teenage years, we're doing 13 Ghosts from the early 2000s. Now we're moving on kind of into my adult life and the last two movies I'm picking, I'm kind of doing out of order, I guess, in terms of chronology, if you want to put it that way. But the third movie I'm going to pick is Cujo. And this one was really my wife's recommendation for this video because we have a dog, Winston. I've talked about him. You've seen some updates on my channel here re recently because he had been sick and whatnot. But he's not a St. Bernard. He's a Rottweiler. But we have a dog, you know, big breed dog, large breed dog. And she said, well, you got to add Cujo into the list, just in honor of Winston. Uh, even though he's the complete opposite, he is one of the best dogs you could ever have. Uh, real calm, laid back, you know, super nice. But Cujo, you know, about a dog trying to kill people. 
my wife Mallory said you have to add that to the list. So the third movie we're going to do here on the list is going to be Cujo because it really talks about my current kind of time in my life where we have a big breed, large breed dog and everything. So Cujo is going to be the third movie in this marathon list. Okay, now we're down to the last movie in this list, and this was a tough one. I had a lot of different ways I could have gone. My wife really wanted me to pick Pet Cemetery because we have a couple cats here as well, and one of our cats looks just like Churchill, the cat in that movie, uh, the gray cat with the greenish yellow eyes. Uh, she looks just like him. But I felt doing two animal kind of related movies in the same list would be a little bit overkill, in my opinion. So I had to think about what else did I want to add in here that, that could fit. And this one might be a little bit of a controversial pick uh, to horror fans, but to me, I think it fits in nicely and it would be a good bookend and something completely different than everything else that you would have watched up to this point in this marathon. And I'm picking Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Now, the reason I'm picking Sweeney Todd is even though it is a musical, it has musical elements to it, which if you watch my most recent video where I talked with my wife, Mallory, I'm not big on musicals, but Sweeney Todd is one of the ones that I actually do like. Uh, so it's got musical elements. My wife really likes this movie as well. Uh, she likes Johnny Depp. She likes Tim Burton. She's a big musical person. So she likes this movie. I also do consider this uh, eligible because even though it's not a full on horror movie, the whole point of this movie, if you've never seen it or don't really know the main uh, background of this movie because it comes from a stage play, is that Sweeney Todd, Johnny Depp's character, is a barber back in the, you know, olden days in London who basically murders people and then his kind of like mistress lady bakes the dead bodies into meat pies to then sell to the public. And honestly, that's as much of a horror plot as anything else you can get in my opinion. So for me, I think it's valid to be on this list. Now, the big reason I'm picking this outside of the fact that my wife likes it is that I have kind of a special story associated with this movie. So when this first came out, or actually right before it first came out back in like 2007, my wife had gotten two tickets to go to a press screening for this movie at one of the real boutique kind of theaters down in St. Louis called the Tivoli. And we went to go see this and it was like maybe January or February or something like that. It was in the winter time and it was a complete whiteout snowstorm. And so we drove the entire way from our small town like an almost an hour and a half or two hours, however long it took us to drive, going like 30, 40 miles an hour down the road in a complete whiteout snowstorm to St. Louis to the Tivoli to go and watch this movie and watch the press screening. And it was really cool because it had all these like big wig people, you know, reps from like TV stations, newspapers and reporters and websites and all this stuff. They were all there. They had all these fancy hors d'oeuvres and stuff like spreads of like food and things that you could get. And, you know, you got to like mingle and interact with all these people. And it was in the Tivoli, which is like a real old school art house kind of theater, you know, like boutique theater. And so it was just a really cool experience. And we got in for free. We got to go and watch, watch this movie. And so because of that, and because again, I think it does qualify because of its premise and everything, uh, the movie we're going to close out this four movie set with is going to be Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Okay, so there you go. There's my four picks for an all-night horror movie marathon. I think it encompasses a good portion, like, timeline of my life in terms of, like, horror movies and things that relate to me. Now, as with any of these challenge videos, you need to pass it along to other people. And so I've got a few channels that I'm going to kind of tag here. Uh, they'll link, the links for them will be down in the description. Uh, hopefully they see this and maybe they'll do a response as well. Uh, the first one is going to be Cinefessions here on YouTube. He's a little bit bigger channel uh, than mine. He's a little bit uh, older channel here, been around a little longer than me on YouTube. Uh, I've talked to him a little bit a couple times uh, here in my short time, and he seems like he'd be kind of right in the vein of something like this. And when I looked at his 
video catalog. I don't think he's done one like this, or if he has, it hasn't been recent. So I'm gonna pass this challenge along to Cinefessions. I'm also gonna pass it along to two other smaller channels here on YouTube. Uh, the first one is gonna be Kevis and Films. I've talked about him recently. He actually shouted me out in a video. I made a kind of a community post about him, so I'm gonna tag him here as well and shout him out. Kevis is another smaller YouTube channel. Uh, he's actually been in the space a little bit shorter than I even have. He started a few months after I started. So he's another smaller channel and he's had some good opinions and some good content on stuff. So I think this might be fun for him. So Kevis and Films, I'm sending uh, this your way as well. And then the very last one is for a really small YouTube channel. And I've talked to this guy quite a bit and he's interacted on my channel quite a bit over my time here. And that is Everything Home Theater. Uh, he is a small channel. He's done a lot of like shorts, but he's also done a couple full length videos. Uh, but I think he would be kind of a good pick for something like this because he did do a video about some of the more inspirational and influential uh, child films that he watched in his youth growing up. And I thought that video was pretty cool. So I feel like this could maybe fit kind of in there with that. Uh, I know he doesn't post all the time, uh, like the rest of us, you got your life going on and things to do there. So his channel is Everything Home Theater. It'll be linked below and we'll see if he has some time. Uh, if he makes a video response, we'll kind of see what his picks are. And so with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up so it doesn't run too long. Again, thank you for uh, visiting my channel, viewing my content. If you like what I do here, definitely consider liking and subscribing. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your picks for a four movie overnight movie marathon, you know, what you would pick and why you would pick it. And with that, I will see you the next time in the next video here on Secondhand Home Theater. Thank you.